The world's tallest bridge is currently being built in India. It's going to connect Kashmir to the rest of the country. This is going to be a part of a railway line known as Udhampur Srinagar Baramulla rail link. The construction of this railway line includes laying of 200 kilometers of access roads, building 27 tunnels and 37 bridges. The Chenna bridge is going to be built on the treacherous terrain between Katra and Banihal. The 1.3 km arch bridge consists of two parts. The first is the arch bridge itself, which will help in crossing the river. The second is a viaduct being built on piers made of reinforced cement concrete. The 17 piers of the viaduct are being built in such a way that even if one pier is lost, the viaduct will still stand in place. Bridges are designed and built considering topography, the environment and geotechnical factors. They must be able to withstand the forces of wind and earthquakes. But building a bridge high up in the mountains is no mean task. It requires meticulous planning and special engineering. So I got in touch with one of our domain experts, Mr. Mahesh, who is going to walk us through how bridges are built in such difficult landscapes. Can you tell us the differences between laying the foundation for a bridge in a regular terrain versus what they're doing in Chennai right now? In a regular terrain, if you are founding in rock, uh, maybe a good solid rock or a fissure rock, uh, the founding strata or the fissure rocks will generally remain in place uh, due to the confinement provided by the surrounding ground. Uh, whereas in Chinab, the major challenge was the jointed, weathered and uh, weak uh, Himalayan rocks uh, and especially on slopes. Uh, the fissure rocks in slopes are not stable to support the foundations, uh, so hence uh, these have to be treated. So in Chenab, uh, uh, the mitigation was to fill up the measures, uh, fissures uh, between the rock joints uh, by consolidation grouting or hardening of the founding areas uh, before casting the foundations. Okay, and what is this grout made of? Uh, this grout can be anything from a simplest thing like a cement slurry to nowadays there are many kind of uh, chemical grouts that are available. So it can uh, vary depending on the strata that you are trying to fill. So can you walk us through every stage of building a bridge like this? Okay, they've done grouting. What, what next? What comes after that? Okay, even before preparing the ground, actually in this particular, uh, or the foundation, in this particular uh, bridge site, what they did was uh, uh, what they call as uh, excavate the profile of the slope and stabilize the slope. So you see that uh, from the top on the left and right side, you see the slopes are formed in a particular way. You see the original ground level is like a simple straight slope. Whereas the ones that have been formed is like a, a series of steps uh, to reach the top and that's how the uh, they call the uh, stabilizing the slope or forming the slope in a pattern which basically helps it stabilize it. There was a straight uh, inclined profile let's say and now they have cut it into steps all along the uh, from the top to the bottom of the foundation basically. Okay, so do they have to do grouting for each of these uh, piers that they are constructing? Yes, so for each of these one, they are basically, they stabilize each of these slopes and uh, the methods that they have used is uh, like uh, rock bolting, grouting, uh, all these things they are used to basically stabilize uh, these slopes. Once the slope is formed, and then you reach the foundation at the foundation level you see the rock quality and based on that as we said in this particular case it was all fissured rocks so they did they did the consolidation grouting and they form a good uh, founding strata so once the full founding strata is uh, formed then you build up the foundation in this particular uh, case it was like a 40 meter high by 50 meter wide um, uh, foundation that was built so once you build the foundation then you start building up the the arch. Before building up the arch, there's the two vertical piers that are constructed at either ends uh, and uh, once those piers are in place, there is this uh, thing called a stay cable from these piers which uh, come and support the arch. So each arch segment is built up with the help of stay cables and they all um, uh, start stacking up till the whole arch is completed at the middle or the crown of the arch is reached. So once that arch is formed, then the intermediate vertical piers are uh, erected 
and once the peers are uh, have reached the uh, superstructure deck level then the superstructure is launched from either end on uh, both sides and until they meet at the center and the whole deck is formed and once the deck is formed then you lay the uh, tracks on top of it and it's ready for uh, carrying the trains on it is there a particular reason why they chose steel to build this bridge over concrete Yes, steel in this particular case, uh, why? Because uh, the main thing is, it, uh, as we said, the foundations are uh, not very, very strong foundations. So you need to ensure that the load on the foundations are comparatively as much as much possible, you reduce it. And that reduction is possible by steel because concrete uh, gives huge weight, whereas steel is very light, uh, but uh, has got a good capacity. So that's why they go with steel. So they reduce the uh, load on the foundations. Uh, that is one. The other one is, uh, uh, this is a treacherous terrain. So anything concrete means that much heavy, you have to bring all cement, sand, mortar, I mean, aggregates uh, to the site, either mix it up or pre-mix somewhere and bring it all the way to the site and cast the foundations. So that makes it uh, uh, a more daunting task. Uh, the third thing is so basically when you want to do something precast or concrete, then you need very heavy cranes and stuff to uh, cast them or launch them in place. So these three things are the all these three things. Uh, if you do it in concrete, makes it uh, much more cumbersome. Whereas steel makes it uh, that much easier. Right? So every bridge has something called as a resonance frequency, right? I mean, we've had bridges in the past that have uh, reached my, uh, re that that have reached this resonance frequency because of the winds blowing, and they've actually even collapsed. So, what are the steps that engineers take to counteract this phenomenon? Um, uh, resonance basically is uh, the the natural frequency of the bridge. Every bridge has got its natural frequency based on the. Uh, the properties, the strength of the bridge, and the ability to for it to you know um, um, deflect or move based on the uh, stiffness of the various members. Uh, and when wind is acting on it, then it it has its own frequency, and it uh, it uh, tries to uh, basically deflect the bridge uh, based on the wind force. And once this force start, they what they call it as a um, uh, fluttering of the bridge basically what happens is when the wind is hitting the bridge the bridge also tries to resonate and once both of them reach the same frequency because the, the frequency at which the bridge is vibrating matches with the frequency of the wind they both are at the same frequency and those same frequency causes resonance basically that basically that actually accelerates the whole frequency and keeps on resonating and keeps increasing in uh, magnitude mm. that basically causes the bridge to collapse so what they do is they i mean they, they this is what is done when they do the uh, they do a uh, uh, the various models of the bridge they uh, change the various stiffnesses of the bridge the way the wind flows through the bridge they ensure that the wind is smoothly flowing through the bridge so the deck is uh, formed in a particular shape so that there is uh, the wind uh, flows smoothly over and under it and doesn't cause the flutter in it and um, that's basically helps in not uh, reaching the resonance frequency of the bridge and this is also before constructing of the bridge what they do is they do a wind tunnel testing a scale model of the bridge is uh, made and it is uh, put inside a wind tunnel and the wind forces are applied on it to check how the bridge is behaving and based on that they whatever the results they get they fine tune the bridge to ensure that the resonance is not reached and the bridge is good for the wind forces and what are the other challenges that you think that the engineers would have faced while building this bridge? Yeah, they see this uh, particular bridge uh, as it is, I mean, we already talked about it. It's uh, not a regular terrain. It's so it's difficulty of transportation of main material and working at height about uh, 360 meters, uh, working at height safely. Uh, that itself is a big challenge. It's difficult, uh, steep slopes, deep valleys, inaccessible areas, high winds and low temperatures and also the requirement to work on the bridge without obstructing the river. 
so these were the major things uh, that were um, faced at this particular uh, bridge site and whenever the wind speed reached uh, 50 kmph km per hour or more they actually stopped work mm. so, oh so they actually stopped work it must be quite it must be quite scary being on top right I mean, it's, it's, definitely i, I will never <laughs> definitely be on top of it <laughs> after finishing it i will go there but <laughs> but having said that i have been on bridges which are like not maybe it's not so high, maybe 80 meters high. That's what <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much mahesh for taking the time off to explain how bridges are built in such difficult landscapes it's it's a remarkable it's a remarkable bridge to even look at and i'm sure it's going to be fantastic to travel across and uh, let's hope they finish it soon yeah okay thank you thank you <laughs>